Well, you know what? You, the producer, put it up anyway. You know. I'm going to be speaking to the uh, Congressional Health Caucus uh, week after next to talk about some things because it's very important that that people put forward a plan. And uh, you know, the thing that I favor is using electronic medical records that are embedded in a microchip, not in cyberspace, so that anybody can get it. And think about the symptoms. People know your allergies, your medications, whether there was a spot in your lung five years ago just by popping it into the computer and you maintain control of it. Saves us an enormous amount of money. All the dental records will be there. But, but he he actually mentions embedding the, the information into the chip. So what do you think they're going to do with the chip? They're going to put the chip in you eventually, okay? They even got nanotechnology where they're making the chips even smaller. You know, and, and there's more proof in the book of uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter, that is talking about the mark of the beast or the microchip. This is uh, Revelation 13, 18. It's, it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Now, when you break down the, the word six hundred, three score, and six, or that number, in the Greek, it breaks down to three different uh, Greek uh, uh, characters, which is Chi, Psi, and Stigma. Now, when you click on Chi, Psi, and Stigma, and you go to the actual, uh, you go to the actual, um, uh, Hebrew, I'm sorry, the uh, Greek, it doesn't break down the number. It just it just goes into saying how it, it, it translates to 600, uh, 600, 600, 666, 666. It doesn't go down to the breakdown of, of the word. But now, when you know the, the Greek, there's there's three three uh, um, three numbers. That's Chi, which is 600, Psi, which is 60, and Stigma, which is 6. Now, when you look up the word stigma, you know, because you have, you have to actually look up that word stigma, there's a scripture in the book of Galatians, the 6th chapter, the 17th verse that says, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Yahweh Shai. And when you look up that word marks, it goes to the Greek word stigma. And when you click on the word stigma, it, it, it breaks it down to, uh, to stick, an example, prick. It says, a mark pricked in or branded upon the body. To ancient oriental usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name of the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked, cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belonged to. And there were even some devotees who stamped themselves in this way with the token of their gods. So pretty much, and then it goes on to say stigma, uh, stizo, to stick, prick. A mark incised or punched for recognition of ownership. An example, an example, figuratively, scar of service, mark. So basically, uh, it, it's a, 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 a symbol, a, a mark that's actually imprinted into you to uh, distinguish what uh, master you belong to. You know, in this case, the so-called international bankers who have this technology of the RFID microchip to embed into their slaves so that they can be uh, uh, slaves for forever. You know, so so basically that's letting you know that it, it's something that, that's like, you know, like with horses. You know, you brand the horse, you burn a, a, a brand into them. But some horses you can, or, or cows, you can put, they, they have some uh, uh, like uh, rings that they put on them with a number attached to them, you know, to, di to differentiate the, the name of that particular cow and who that cow belonged to and how many times that cow was mated and so on and so forth. You know, and that's the same thing that they're doing with people of the world. Because what they want is they want slaves. They want control. Slaves. Control, right. It's all about control. Um, I got an example for, for you brothers out there. Yeah, let me read this real quick. Yeah. Exodus uh, 21 and 5. And if it talks about your uh, servant and master relationship, right? Um... 
let me start at uh Uh, let me, damn, you really got to start from the first. Okay. I'll, I'll start from the first. I might jump around. It says, uh, Exodus 21 and one. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. These are laws that Moses, that the most I gave to Moses, Moses gave to the children of Israel, right? It says when they were going into the land, if thou buy an Hebrew servant, all right, six years, he shall, shall serve. That's talking about your people. When you when you own a, a business, I'm talking about today, the, the modern day, present day, and you employ somebody. That's the employ employer employee relationship, which is that of a master and a slave. Okay, that's where the language goes back to. So in the ancient world, you had that you had Israelites that were servants under other Israelites. It says, uh, second verse, if thou buy an Hebrew servant, it says, if thou buy a Hebrew, this is Moses telling the children of Israel, which are Hebrews, if thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years shall he, shall he serve, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. So when you go to the story of Jacob, right, and he got with Rachel and Leah, he had to do what? He had to he had to become a slave under um Laban. L that was that Laban? Yeah. That was um you're right, that was Laban. Uh, you right, Junior. <laughs> yeah. He was he, that was Laban. So Laban tricked him. He said, Well, you gotta work seven years for my first daughter. Right. And then when he went in to lay with Rachel, it was Leah. Then he kind of said, Well, wait a minute, man, you 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 pulled a fast one on me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what he did was he pulled out the custom. He said, well, the custom said the, the oldest got to go before the youngest. The oldest daughter, right. But if you still want Rachel, you work another uh, seven years. Yeah. And Jacob was so in love with Rachel that he said that it went like, what like is it? A few days. A few, like a few days or a week still. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something he said like it went like nothing. Yeah. So she was like seven years later, she was still fine. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Every so that shows you that that shows you that custom yeah. transferred uh, into the law. Con. Okay. Yeah, you know everything. It was day. a custom first, which is like an unwritten law. That's right. So now yeah. it became written in stone, literally. That's right. Um. It says, uh, "In the seventh, in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing." Now Esau, I've been watching these, and I told you, brother, tell you brothers all the time, watch these financial shows, man. I was listening to uh, Mac, Max Kaiser. He does a show on uh, on uh, RT. He does like a show, I think, five days a week. And the last show he did, they were talking about the economic uh, situation, world situation. And he had this guest on from England, and they were talking about how this economic system that they set up with the debt system there's a certain point where everybody goes bankrupt. There's no more money. We're in that point right now. And he basically started referring to the scriptures. So that's what they're talking about. They're talking about, well, we got to go to the scriptures now and we got to apply what the scriptures uh, 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 speak about. And he mentioned Jubilee. He said, there's, there's a thing in the scripture. Uh, if, you, if you go to Google and you put a uh, world economic leaders and the jubilee, it might come up. So he now, if you go to the scriptures and you read about the jubilee, the jubilee is a release. So once every fifty years, whatever whatever debt that you owed to 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 anybody, you are also freed from your masters in that fifty year uh, period. So if you owed a, a a lot of a great deal of uh, money or cattle or, or whatever to somebody when the year of jubilee came in that was forgiven what he didn't mention was a year of release which comes up every seven years which esau today uses a statute of limitation when you have a credit card bill that you can't pay the debt it's seven or eight years you get a clean slate where did they get that from they got that from the scripture